Well, hello everybody, it's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you know that God is with you exactly in the place where you are. We were in this series, The Holy Spirit Powered Life. Can I say to you, if you have not watched yesterday's daily devotional, the one that came out on Sunday, I would deeply encourage you to go back and watch that first because it will help make this far more powerful and meaningful to you. So go back and if you're on our website, you can go just to uh, on, on, a, on a computer to the right, you'll see an explore tab, just go to yesterday's uh, video. If you're watching on a phone, just go underneath and you can find it uh, under the, under the you'll find the explore tab there, just go underneath there. If you're watching through social media or online somewhere, go to our website, look for daily devotionals and find the explore tab and go to yesterday. Today will make far greater sense. Well, we've been talking about Jesus saying to us, be rich in the kingdom, be rich in the Lord's ways. And, and there's a way of seeing and understanding that is at, at first somewhat hard to grasp. And as I likened it yesterday, it's a little bit too like maturity. We can tell someone what a mature person is. We can tell a child, a teenager, what a mature person is, but they will never fully comprehend maturity until they get there. And in a, same, in a sense, the spiritual journey, whilst it's not limited to years, because there have been some extraordinarily young people who are spiritually very mature, the truth is, is that it does take time. And, and unless there's an action, an almighty action of God upon a person's life, and there has been, it, maturity, spiritual maturity takes time. And what we tend to do is we tend to look at the things of God through the eyes of the world, rather than we look at the things of God through the eyes of God or through us in a spiritual manner. I want to have a look at a passage of scripture today that, that that's, that's follows on from what we've talked about these last uh, three days, uh, Thursday, Friday, and on Sunday. And then, of course, we prayed on Saturday. Well, and it, let's go to Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 35. And it says, and keep in mind, look at the, the verse fourth says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Right? And then it says this, be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom his master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. It's just a really powerful passage of scripture. Um, uh, it, it, Jesus says, be alert, be ready. Be growing, be maturing in your relationship with God. One of the temptations that there is, and when I was a young boy and being a Catholic, I, I still remember the era of being told that it was a mortal sin if you didn't go to Mass on Sunday. I remember being told that it was just paramount and that it was terrible if you didn't go to Mass on Sunday. And now the church uses a different set of language. It calls it a serious obligation. And... And, and so for much of my young life, being impressionable, I went to church not out of any sense of relationship with God, not out of any sense of needing to pray. I went out of, to church out of fear, fear that somehow I might be damned to hell because I didn't go to Mass on Sunday. Keep in mind, don't hear me saying that it's not, I, I think it's unimportant. I'm not at all saying that. But what, but, but what that action and that, in a sense, negative motivation, even though it was meant to have a positive result, what it did was it caused me never to develop a relationship with God, but rather to live in fear of God, that God would punish me for something that was, didn't feel real, that I didn't understand, that I wasn't experienced, that I was keeping a hollow rule that apparently was good for me. 
And so, and so to be honest with you, my watchfulness, if we use this, this, this phrase here that's used in the scripture, my watchfulness was born of fear and not relationship. What Jesus is saying here in this passage of scripture is be ready with your life. Be ready with your spiritual journey that's growing. Now, we've got to read the scripture, not just by pulling a few verses out. You've got to read it in context of what it's saying elsewhere. And what, what's gone previously is Jesus has been saying, it's not in the things of the world. It's not in power and possession and money and, and all of those things that matters. It's a matter of being rich in me. And as you become rich in me, your thinking begins to change and you move from worrying about yourself to worrying about the kingdom of God. Not saying at all that you don't have concerns to look after your, your temporal and your, wor your worldly issues that you have for life. But Jesus is saying here in this passage of scripture, be ready so that, so that when you are called, when the Lord comes, you are ready and you have gone as far as you can be. And so it's a watchfulness of growth. It's a watchfulness of maturity. It's a watchfulness of, of, of saying to the Lord, Lord, this is my life today and I'm as far as I can be with you as I understand, as I know, as what has been revealed to me today. I'm as far as I can be. And, when, and, and it's likened to the master who comes from a banquet and his slaves are ready. Now, now, we live in a world where slavery is not something that we have. Well, sadly, there is massive human slavery today. But it's not in, 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 in these slaves, in many cases, were, were people who were effectively servants in some cases. And, and, so, and he says to them, be ready to attend to what your master needs. And it's like, be ready, because if you're ready, <laughs> you get to sit with the master. And in a sense, what, what these passages we've been looking at are saying to us is, have your lives ready. So be people of prayer. Be people who are coming before God and examining your conscience, examining your life, and recognizing the times when you fall down, the places where you fail, and come back to God and say, God, forgive me. You know, forgive me for taking my eyes off you. Forgive me for putting my eyes upon myself and trusting in my ability, my skill, my talent, my possessions, what I have. And, and, and you allow yourself to turn to the Lord. Allow yourself to turn to God, surrendering your heart to him. This, Luke chapter 12 is just a beautiful passage of spiritual maturity. And you need to take it to prayer and you need to think about it and think about it and allow it to come alive in you. It, it's calling us to more than attendance. It's calling us to love. It's calling us for more than obligation. It's calling us to love. It, it's calling us for more from that sense of, I better do it because I'll be guilty. It's calling us to love. It's a beautiful passage of scripture. It's a very mature passage of scripture. And for me as a man, I find it a very masculine uh, uh, concept in terms of how I see this whole sense of having to surrender that part of me that wants to do and to conquer and to be successful and to lay it down and to say unto you, Lord, I surrender my heart. I give you my life, which is both for men and women something that we are called to do. Loving Father, I thank you today that you call us to richness upon richness. Allow us, Lord God, to encounter you and experience you more deeply. Allow us to grow in deeper maturity to you. And Father, we make this prayer in the name of Jesus through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow. Don't forget wherever you are, God is never ever far from you.